Have you ever wondered how businesses keep track of their countless transactions? Or how they know exactly where their money is going? Well, whether you know it or not, you are thinking about debits and credits. The language of accounting. The double entry system. Today we're going to unlock the mystery behind these crucial yet often misunderstood terms and how they shape financial transactions and balance sheets. Hello and welcome to Concierge CPA. I am Juliette and I'll be your guide on this journey to simplify debits and credits. By the end of this video, you'll gain a thorough understanding of debits and credits, just like a CPA. Our journey begins with the principle of double entry accounting. It's like a conversation in the world of finance where every sentence, or in our case, transaction, has two parts, a debit and a credit. In accounting, debits and credits are used to record financial transactions. There are notations that indicate how money flows in and out of different accounts. Understanding these concepts is essential for accurate financial record keeping and ensuring the integrity of financial statements. But before we can master debits and credits, let's debunk a common myth. Contrary to popular belief, debit doesn't necessarily mean decrease, and credit doesn't necessarily mean increase. They are just the language of accounting, telling us where to record financial events. What you really want to do is to think of debits and credits as the left and right side of the accounting equation and accounts. So again, debits mean left and credits mean right. Debits increase certain accounts, while credits decrease them. It may sound confusing at first, but don't worry. I'll break it down for you with some examples, and I will give you something to help you remember. To truly understand debits and credits, we must visit their natural habitat, the T account. Now here is where you can see how debit entries go on the left side of the T account and credit entries go on the right. If you're thinking, why so? Well, if you must know, centuries ago, Luca Pacioli, a Franciscan friar and an Italian mathematician, discovered a powerful secret, the language of debits and credits. He passed it on to the Medici family, who changed the world with it, and today I am here to pass this ancient wisdom to you. T-accounts. Here in the T-accounts is where the transactions are recorded. Whenever a financial event happens, the total debits and the total credits in the accounts must remain equal. If they are not, you got to check your entries. By using debits and credits, we maintain the balance in the accounting equation. Assets equals liabilities plus equity. Now, you're probably asking yourself, how do I know when to debit or credit the account? Well, that is the most important question and concept to understand. In the language of accounting, we say that every account has a natural debit or credit balance. Remember the accounting equation? Assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity? I said to think of debits on the left and credits on the right. Debits on the left side of the accounting equation increase the accounts, and credits on the right side of the equation increase the accounts, and vice versa. Let's make it even easier to remember by expanding the accounting equation one step further and rearranging some things. Equity, in addition to owner's contributions, include revenue, expenses, and dividends. Expenses and dividends reduce the owner's equity, which means these accounts are increased by debits. We can move them over to the other side of the accounting equation to help us remember the rules. The new equation is dividends, plus expenses, plus assets, equals liabilities, plus equity, plus revenue. Every account will fall under one of these labels. The same holds true in the expanded accounting equation. Debits on the left increase the accounts, and credits on the right increase the accounts. You can use the acronym DEALER to help you remember this expanded accounting equation. So remember, Debits on the left, credits on the right. Assets, expenses, and dividends get increased by debits, while liabilities, equity, and revenue get increased by credits. Now let's bring this idea to life through the tales of two friends, Alice and Bob. Alice, with a passion for lemonade, starts a lemonade stand. 
she invests $100. In the accounting world, her cash account gets debited by $100 as she has more assets, and her equity account gets credited by $100. Alice sells lemonade for $60 cash during her first day. Her cash account is debited by $60 to reflect the increase in cash. Her revenue account is credited by $60 to show she has earned revenue. Alice purchases lemons, sugar, and other materials for $30 in cash to make lemonade. Her cash account is credited by $30, indicating a decrease, and her inventory account is debited by $30, indicating she has acquired assets, lemons and sugar, for her business. Bob, a tech whiz, opens a gadget repair shop and borrows $500 from a friend. His cash account gets debited, but instead of equity, the liabilities account gets credited as he owes the money. Bob buys repair tools for $200 using cash. His cash account is credited for $200 and his equipment account, an asset, is debited. Bob performs a repair service for a customer and charges $150. The customer pays in cash. His cash account is debited by $150 to reflect the increase in cash. His revenue account is credited by $150 to show he has earned revenue. You see, in the land of accounting, debits increase the left side of the balance sheet, which is assets, and credits increase the right side, which is liabilities and equity. Let's explore a few more examples. Imagine you're a small business owner and you purchase office supplies worth $500. In this scenario, your cash account decreases by $500, which is a credit, while your office supplies account increases by $500, which is a debit. These debits and credits ensure that the equation stays balanced. Now let's consider another example. Suppose you receive payment from a customer for services rendered totaling $1,000. In this case, your cash account increases by $1,000, which is a debit, while your account's receivable account decreases by $1,000, which is a credit. Once again, the equation remains balanced. That's the magic of the double entry system. It ensures the balance sheet remains balanced. Thanks for joining me on this journey through the world of debits and credits. I hope you found this video informative and engaging. If you have any questions or want to share your experiences, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and until next time.